Welcome to the first in a series of introductory videos for the iMachining for NX CAM software. In this video, I'm going to go over the basic setup of the iMachining toolpath. That's because everything else inside of iMachining comes from NX, things like the geometries and the tool definitions. And as you see here on the side, I've already defined my machine coordinate system and my workpiece. Likewise, if we go to the machine view, I've defined a one inch end mill and a half inch end mill. So all of that is the basic NX definitions you would usually use for your regular NX CAM toolpath. For iMachining, we're just gonna use those as well. It is actually suggested to define the workpiece and MCS beforehand before you get into the iMachining. As a user defined operation, there's gonna be minimal information that we're gonna actually have in the first window, but then when we get to the user parameters, we'll see that we have an expanded bit. So we're gonna see that right now. Let's go to create operation from the tool type, operation type we're going to go and find iMachining and iMachining comes in two types 2D iMachining and 3D iMachining we're going to see how each one of those works in videos two and three of this series but for now we're just going to look at the setup of both the usual information you put in here for your NX toolpath I'm just going to go right into the main window and like I said as a user defined operation there's not much here but when you go to the user parameters, you'll see the full expanded interface for iMachining. And essentially, what we're doing here is we're going to go to settings. And we're going to tell iMachining which machine and which material we intend to use. So in this case, from the list, the default list has two machines so far. And the workpiece material list has an entire list, an entire database here that comes with the software. Both these entries are for trial purposes, training purposes. So it actually is advised to enter in your own information for the specific machine that you're using and the specific material that you're gonna be machining. And we'll do that here under Edit Database. That brings us to the I database. And what we wanna do here is enter in our machine information and our material information. So if, for instance, in the machine database, I'll click New. And let's just give it a quick name. We'll just say test. The highlighted information is all we need to provide. Here it is simply the max spindle speed, the max feed rate, and the max horsepower of this machine. That information can come from your machine supplier, your operations manual. You can even do a web search for the make and model of your machine, and you should be able to find a data sheet on that information. Likewise, for the material, it's best to put in your own information. So let's do that real quick. We'll say new. Again, just a quick name. The highlighted information is all we need. In this case, the, the ultimate tensile strength of this material. Again, you can get this from your material supplier and you can get this from the web. One place that we send people to is matweb.com. It's a material library with all kinds of material information for different metals. All you have to do is in this top corner here, just do a search. For instance, we're machining 6061. So I typed in 6061. In the search results, I found the particular grade of aluminum that I'm looking for. And from that material data sheet, I looked at the mechanical properties and I found the 45,000 PSI. I actually did this previously when I defined my AL6061. You can see there it's 45,000 PSI. You can enter these units in either metric or inch. So whatever information you find, you'll be able to plug it in. Um, to further define the material, we have all these other options down here. Now they're all set to auto because in this case, uh, I don't have this particular information. But if you're looking at your material information, your machine information, if there's any additional information you want to plug into the, to the software, you have that ability in the sub windows down here. I'm just gonna hit cancel because I already have my material defined and I plan to use that same machine anyway. So I'll just go through my list and look for my AL6061 and go back to the main screen. In addition to the material information, the machine information, the tool information is also used in the calculation of iMachining. So if we skip down to the bottom here, you'll see there's a wizard. The wizard information is looking at the tool information. So in this case, the material that the tool is made out of, in this case, it's either a solid carbide, cobalt, HSS, or a coated carbide. The flute length, the flute angle, are also being used. So in this case, you can see here I'm defining the flute angle, and the flute length was defined previously when I defined the tool. All this information is used to calculate both the 2D and the 3D iMachining toolpaths to better optimize the toolpath, reducing cycle times, increasing tool life. 
We'll see how each toolpath is used in the next series of videos. Videos two for iMachining 2D and, serial, and video three for 3D iMachining. Stay tuned for the rest of the videos on this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.